Yes, this is Orchard Road. A road that used to be an orchard and plantation, but now everyone knows this place. Locals, tourists, people come here to do one thing and one thing only, to shop. But there are also restaurants and cafes around, but people still come here to shop because there are huge malls around here. Malls selling anything that you want to shop to satisfy your retail therapy itch. There are boutiques, there are huge, huge shopping malls and it's all in the comfort of air condition. But do you know? Do you want to know? Are you aware that, yes, that Orchard Road, the glitz and glamour, the expensive residence, the glitz, glistening shopping malls, hides a dark history, dark secrets, bloody secrets, even murder. Yes. Join me as I will show to you, explain to you, tell you all the dirty little secrets of Orchard Road. One thing good about Orchard Road is there are a lot of uh, underpass or underground passages that connects all the different malls and it is a very good, a very very enjoyable way to get out of the hot tropical weather. But did you know one of the dark history, the dark secrets of Orchard Road is that in the past, a lot of the residents of Orchard Road used to live underground too. I'm talking about, yes, I'm not talking about people living in houses underground. I'm talking about people who are buried here. Not this exact location, but along Orchard Road, there are three, yes, three cemeteries that used to be along Orchard Road. So in the past, as people lived and worked along Orchard Road, they also buried their loved ones, their family members along Orchard Road too. And along Orchard Road, there were three such cemeteries, resting places. Maybe one of the better known locations of the cemetery is here at this place. Yes, Nian City. So this place in the past used to be a cemetery established in 1845. This was a Teochew cemetery. It spanned 72 acres. So parts, most likely this whole location here and the hills behind it and also part of Ion, which is next door, used to be a cemetery. But one thing interesting is if you look at the, this location now, especially the flat poles there, doesn't the flat poles look a bit like uh, joysticks? And the design of Nian City, doesn't it resemble something from its past? It is said or it is rumoured that um, the architect of this place here, maybe subconsciously, was influenced by this place being a cemetery design or architect or make this location, this building, look like a Chinese tomb. And if you look at the building now, especially this semi-circle uh, wall around here, doesn't it, it look a bit like a tombstone? A tomb, a Chinese tomb. I don't know. But that's what people say. And there is a bit of similarity, but you know, maybe the past did influence the future. What a stark contrast 
this place used to be in the past and now in the present future. What a difference in time and space it makes. Behind the Copton Hotel along Orchard Road used to be another cemetery. It is said to be the oldest burial site along Orchard Road. It was there since the 1800s and it was located from somewhere behind this hotel all the way up to the Istana grounds which is right behind that, behind this building and the only uh, inkling or the only um, evidence we have that this place could have been a cemetery is the road names if you go behind this building you'll notice the road names uh, you'll see uh, Karamat Road or Karamat Lane and the word Karamat is actually a Malay word meaning a grave of a holy person yeah, so you can see that that's the street side Karamat Lane and then behind there Karamat Road so this place here especially um, this place used to be a burial ground for the Bengkulan Malays who came to Singapore from West Sumatra which is in Indonesia in the 1820s so they settled along Bengkulan Street and this is where they were buried so this place here was actually a cemetery until maybe the, until 1973 and then it was exhumed and what you see now has been built so all they can re all the remains of this location now you can see is uh, nothing much you can see there is a small little hill behind there and that hill is actually the grounds of the istana which is the official res residence of the president of singapore and in front of that is this highway the cte or the central expressway a very very busy highway a very different location or a very a location where a lot of cars pass by which used to be a resting place for people who doesn't move isn't that ironic our final location is at here this MRT station which is a long orchard road called Dobigod MRT station yes Dobigod so yes there was a cemetery here you wouldn't know it by looking at it now but this location was the site of the second oldest uh, cemetery along Orchard Road which was a Jewish cemetery yes so around this area here this open space um, where is a place where after the British, British East India Company established Singapore as a trading port you know that was probably in 1819 so various trading communities came to settle in Singapore and one of those community communities were the Jewish community so this was where they buried at their dead so over here this boundary here you see this open place used to be where the cemetery was it was established in 1841 under a 99 year lease and people were buried here until 1903 where they actually had a until they had another cemetery to to bury their dead then when the lease expired in 1940 uh, what happened was the government didn't take back the land so they left it as a cemetery until 1983 where this land uh, was ex uh, was taken back by the government the graves were exhumed and this place here you see now the MRC station was built along Orchard Road there are two locations that feature prominently in the recollections of those who survived the occupation of Singapore during World War II yes two locations in front of me now is the Cathay building the original building was a 16th story building built in 1941 and at that time it was the first 
remember the first skyscraper in Singapore and the tallest building in Southeast Asia. Unfortunately, the only thing that remains of the original building is this facade, which is the, the facade for the cinema, the Cathay Cinema. The building uh, has been demolished and they have rebuilt another building behind it. The only remembrance of its World War II history is this plaque you see here. And this building, during the Japanese occupation, housed the Japanese Broadcasting Department, the Japanese Military Propaganda Department, and the Japanese Military Information Bureau. And in March 1942, the Japanese Broadcasting Department began transmission of Radio Shonan. And in this building, there was also a restaurant uh, for the dining of uh, Japanese military officers and occasional film screening to the public. But what this place is uh, more remembered for what really sends shivers down my spine is that where I'm standing now in front of the cinema uh, those who were caught stealing and looting were beheaded and their head were put on poles and put on display in front of the cinema yes these are some instances of the chilling war, World War II history along Orchard Road. So at this site used to stand the old YMCA building. The building is gone, replaced by this building. But the only reminder, the only remainder of what happened here is this plaque, this memorial this so all that remains of the old YMCA building or a remembrance of it is this plaque here behind me now all you have is a new modern not really modern building but just a new YMCA building is right behind me during the Japanese occupation of Singapore from 1942 to 1945 there stands or there used to stand a building here and in this building, the Camp Peitai, which was the Japanese military police, set up their headquarters here. So this location was the Camp Peitai East District Branch. This building served as a prison for people who were suspected of being anti-Japanese. Prisoners were cramped into small cells and forced to be motionless and absolutely silent. Those arrested would be tortured for the purpose of extracting the names of any anti-Japanese accomplice and any refusal to offer such names would lead to further punishment. So this place was the site of interroga interrogation and torture of many innocent civilians, including the war heroine Elizabeth Choi. But that is not the end. Yes, not the end, because there are more dark secrets along Orchard Road that I have not revealed to you yet. In our next video, I will tell you about the bombings that happened along Orchard Road. Yes, bombings. And then, the week after that, we will talk about murders, bloody murders, double murders that occurred or is related to Orchard Road. So, like I said, Orchard Road, there are lots of dark secrets, hidden secrets, things that the normal people do not want you to know about Orchard Road, but I will reveal it all to you. So join me as I tell you all the dirty 
little secrets of Orchard Road. And um, I guess before we go, uh, do me a favor. Uh, please help me by liking my video, sharing my video, and also subscribing to my channel. Uh, I got Patreon, and I also have a PayPal. Uh, you can also support me that way. And or watch some of my old videos. I got a lot of food videos, all videos where I walk around Singapore. If you're interested in that, uh, look at those. And lastly, but the most important thing, the thing that you have to do is to join me for my next adventure. I will see you guys around. Bye-bye.